Now, notice that for past tense, what it puts with this Antichrist, it puts a past tense on his first half of reigning, right? That's his first half of reigning. Now, the present tense is what? Where he is not existing. Okay, is that present tense? Okay, so that's his, what? His burial, obviously, right? When he went to hell. He got buried and then he went to hell. Future tense, you'll notice, is referring to his second half here. Now, whether you want to put it first three and a half years of the tribulation to second half three half years of the tribulation or to uh, the first day where he enters the tribulation and then you got the remaining uh, three and a half years or et cetera, et cetera, it don't matter. The point is basically first half he was reigning, future second half he will reign. But the present tense, this is my key, okay? Why did the Bible put present tense when he went to hell? Why couldn't it put the present tense to his first half of reigning or to his, uh, his second half of reigning? So what that means is this. What timeline is John in then? See, this is Revelation. He's moving in visions, right? So it gave you a clue now what timeline John, in, John is in. John, the timeline that he is in over here is that he is in the timeline of right here. He is not at the first half of the tribulation at Revelation 17. Neither is he at the second half of the tribulation at Revelation 17. Wait a minute. Then that means, remember Revelation 16? Isn't this already near the end of the tribulation? Yeah, so this is already near the end of the tribulation. So that's his second and a half reign. That's the Antichrist second and a half years of reigning. Uh, excuse me, second half. What, what are, okay, second half. I was writing two and a half. That's why it just confused me over here. This is his second half of continuing his reign, right? So notice over here that John jumped, switched to a different timeline here. Okay, if he switched to a different timeline over here, the present timeline is that the Antichrist is in hell. Now, now, look at this. This is fascinating, okay? He sees the Roman Catholic Church in power. She is ruling in power, Satan incarnate, and that's that present time that John is in. See that over here? So if John is in that present time where he sees the Roman Catholic Church in power, now, let's... Uh, I know that a lot, I'm giving you a lot, but this is all calculating if you remembered your Revelation verse-by-verse verse Bible studies, okay? There was a point of me going verse-by-verse verse so that you can remember those doctrines so that when we get deeper into Revelation, these can all calculate, okay? In his second half, do you remember where he's at? Is the Antichrist in Rome or in Jerusalem? Yeah, he's in Jerusalem, right? So in his second half, in the second half over here, the Antichrist... He's not here at Babylon. He's here at Jerusalem. When does he enter Jerusalem? Do you guys recall when does he enter into Jerusalem? He enters Jerusalem once he gets resurrected. When he gets resurrected, oh, I almost tossed my pen. So uh, when he gets resurrected, then he enters Jerusalem. Now you might say, okay, uh, uh, how do you know that? I believe I taught it last time, but let's do it here, okay? So let's go over here. So notice verse 8. It says he's going into perdition, right? Okay. Present tense, right? Present tense. That's this timeline here, right? Are we all on the same page? Uh, hopefully no one's lost. At this present tense timeline, which John is in, this is where the Antichrist is going to perdition, Correct? All right, now let me reword hell with perdition. That way we can all understand where we're at, okay? So I think the best thing to do it is this way. So let me do it this way. Okay? And then for this one, I am going to draw an arrow all the way over here so that we don't get lost and can understand. Okay, so present tense that John is in 
is referring to all of this, okay? Yep. And that is perdition. That's a timeline where the Antichrist is going to hell or perdition. Larkin's charts are pretty useful, actually. Okay, so let's, <laughs> let's look at over here. If he went to perdition that time, go to 2 Thessalonians 2. Keep your hand at Revelation 17, and let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2. And I got to be quick here because there are more juicy ones I got to show you, okay? So I can't believe I'm taking so much time. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, notice over here, we're going to read verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. This wicked being, this person, Jesus Christ, is going to destroy him at Armageddon. Why, that's pretty obvious. That's the Antichrist. But it's even more plain when you read verse 9. See, verse 9. He's coming after the power of Satan. See, Satan incarnate. So that's the Antichrist. Okay, since we know that's the Antichrist, let's look at verse 3. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that what? Man of sin, man of sin be revealed, the who? Son of perdition. Son of perdition. What? Wait a minute. He's called the son of perdition. Why? Because he went to perdition. Yeah. When he gets born and comes out of perdition, look at this. Verse 4, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in where? Temple the temple of God. See, he's entering God's temple in Jerusalem. I mean, come on. When you read throughout the Bible, when it talks about a temple on earth and God's temple, I mean, throughout the whole Bible, we know where that is, right? Okay, that, that's referring to Jerusalem. So that's a no-brainer. So we see over here, See, he's called perdition. Why? He comes out of perdition over here. He comes out of perdition and enters the temple. Okay, so we know that. Look at the chart, okay? This is called a chart for dummies, okay? So, okay, but over here, the end, the second half, that's where the Antichrist is, is okay? Now we're going backwards in time over here, okay? John is seeing the Antichrist connected in this Roman Catholic power before he enters Jerusalem. Okay? Whoa, excuse me. Okay, then what does that mean? Wow, this is fascinating then. That means then if the Antichrist already had a uh, connection with the Roman Catholic Church system, then his first half has to be a Roman Catholic Church system. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have a home. Where are you going to put his home at? That's his first half then. So that's the interesting thing. His first half, where he's going to be then, is going to be in Rome. The Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church. That is intensely interesting over here. So, his first half, he'll be ruling in Rome. Then he goes to perdition. And then he's going to move it to Jerusalem, the temple, which is why the Antichrist has no problem destroying Babylon later on. You might say, really? He's going to turn against the Roman Catholic Church? Yeah, it's, I'm going to show you later on. Wow, why would he do that? History repeats itself. The, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church kicked out the Jesuits, actually. So, and then they got the Jesuits back. That's normal. That's normal in every power system, not just Catholic. It's any system. Within their own system, there are always people fighting for power. Okay? They all want power. All right. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7. All right. Now let's get even into more fun stuff. You ready for this? Okay. The book is amazing. Like I told you so many times, it will what? Blow up your mind. It will blow up your mind every time. Every time. Every time. So... It's an amazing book that you hold in your hand, and it is definitely not to be taken lightly or collecting dust on your shelf right now, okay? All right, it is something else, that book. All right, so he's here at the first half, present tense, where uh, John is in. He's already seeing Satan starting up something over here. 
And then we see here at uh, the second half that he's going to enter the temple, and then God's going to destroy the Roman Catholic Church, which we already read at Revelation 16. But we're going to see that repeated at Revelation 18. Okay, let's continue here. The mystery. So the angel showing us the mystery, all right? So we already understood the first part of verse 8 here. And they that, uh, let's keep reading the second half of verse 8. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Yeah, of course, everyone's going to wonder after the beast, right? We read that at Revelation 13. They wondered after the beast, wondered after the dragon. See, it's Satan incarnate, uh, two in one. Whose names were not written in the book of life, from the foundation of the world. So notice here the people who worship and wonder after the Antichrist, their names are not written in the book of life. You notice that? But here's a Calvinist teaching where they claim that. So notice that these people's names were deliberately by God, not written in God's book of life ever since the foundation of the world. Wait, so then basically they're saying then, the people who worship the Antichrist was already determined by God's will that you're going to burn in hell and I'm going to have you worship the Antichrist. Ain't that sad? Yeah. Actually, that's more than sad. That's wicked. wicked. That's plain wickedness. But Calvinists, see, see they give that, um, that's that deceptional, that's that deception appearance where people watch Paul Washer, John MacArthur, and think that they're very sincere people with this Calvinist evil teaching. See, that's a cloak. You're all judging by appearance what you watch on video. But then when you look at my appearance over here when dismantling wrong doctrine, and I use words that really offend you, you think I'm evil. That's something you're judging on the outward appearance. You're not looking at the doctrine. You got to look at the doctrine. Well, what do you think is more evil? A pastor teaching that this Calvinist heresy that... Uh, people who went to heaven is because that was not their own will. It was God's will that forced them to do that. Yeah. Leaving those who are damned for hell is because of God's will to do that. Yeah. So there was no free choice involved. Or isn't that, more, isn't that evil compared to, hey, every man or woman, child, and no matter what religion you are, Catholic, Buddhist, Muslim, etc., and I don't care if you're a homosexual or a drunk or a prostitute, Amen. every person has the right and the ability to be able to receive the, the loving sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. You think that's evil? And when I kick this evil system, you look at me as being evil? There's someone blinding you. That's right. All right, let's demolish this. Okay, what's the easy... Okay, here's the easy argument, okay? And I believe that I showed you the same argument at Revelation uh, chapter 13, if not chapter 13, chapter 11. Okay, here's the key, okay? Uh, these people's names are not written from the book of life from the foundation of the world. So ever since the beginning, their names weren't written. Well, read the verse, read the verse. Names not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, right? Okay, let's say that their names are not written ever since the beginning of time. Okay, guess what? If you look at the book of life, ever since the beginning of time, before of creation, all right, your name, my name, nobody's name was on the book of life. Why? We did not receive Jesus Christ yet. And until I received Jesus Christ for my salvation, your name, which is not in there ever since the beginning, he'll write it down. Well, isn't this like, wow, that's pretty a dumb moment. Yeah, dumb moment. For Calvinist educated scholars, don't be fooled by these deceivers. Jeff Durbin and all these people may sound very eloquent to you, and their outward appearance is seemingly genuine and loving, but you got to look at the doctrine. That's right. The doctrine is evil. Look, didn't you know there are sincere, genuine people who believe in evil things? Yeah. Think about that. Think about that. Okay, uh, let's... Uh, Look back at our text over here. Wasn't that easy to debunk? Mm -hmm. well, you, the Calvinists, what disgusts me is they get very philosophical. If you don't believe me, look at a debate against Calvinism. And you'll say, and you'll start thinking, this is ridiculous. Why can't we all get along? That's what's going to happen. See, that's how confusing it is that you have to actually study to find right doctrine. Not just be lazy and say it's so confusing. Okay, let's return to our main text here, verse 8. So these are lost people whose names are not in the book of life. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So they look at this Antichrist who, again, past, present, and future. 
So that's referring to the Antichrist. Let's look at verse 9 over here. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Okay, so if your mind has, if you're going to be smart, if you're going to have wisdom, then you're going to know this. See that? Know what? The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. There's your big key there, okay? God says if you're going to be smart, I'm, you're going to recognize this clue about who this woman is riding the beast. Seven heads are what? Seven mountains. You see that over there? Wait, wait a minute. What city? The woman is called the city, right, at Revelation 17? What city is known as the city sitting on the seven hills or mountains, so to speak? Yeah, it's Rome. It's Rome. So notice over here that it's all referring to if you, if, so God says, if you're smart, you're going to recognize that this is Rome. That's the idea. So remember, when people teach you that Babylon is referring to Jerusalem or Babylon is referring to the United States of America, which is the weirdest thing I've heard. I, I'd go more for Jerusalem. It sounds more logical. But if you look at uh, America is not, okay. But anyway, I know it's laughable. But there are people sincerely who believe that. It is the United States of America. That is Babylon, all right? There are documentaries on that, okay? I kid you not. The Babylon, if you're going to have wisdom, you're going to realize it's not Jerusalem. That's not a smart move to say it's Jerusalem. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the Bible. God says if you're smart, you're going to recognize it's what? Referring to Rome. It's not referring to Jerusalem or America. If you guys are teaching that and you don't have wisdom, the Bible says, Amen. then you're not smart. You're being biblically ignorant. Amen. Uh, what strong words? Well, well how, that's, what it is, that's what verse 9 is saying to you. All right, verse 10. All right, here's the good stuff. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. All right, so, oh, I went past the time. I got to end, sorry. Uh, I did not notice. Yeah, I went past the time. I am so sorry. I am so late. 11, I, I went 11 minutes past the time. All right. So I am so sorry. I will end it here. All right. So uh, my favorite was verse 10 and 11, actually. So I, I was afraid I wouldn't get there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So verse 10 and 11, we'll cover it next Sunday. But okay, I'll just give a tease. So basically what this is going to cover is where you're going to see basically Alexander the Great coming back. And this is also going to be referring to the mystery about why is it uh, there's this beast that is and then five kings fallen, knocked off, and the seven remaining, what is that? And it's also going to talk about the ten toes and uh, it can match with the bloodlines of the Illuminati. So basically, we're going to look at the whole structure. We're going to look at the whole structure. And then we're going to tie that, we're going to tie that all that Illuminati heads, you know, because they talk about 13 bloodlines of Illuminati, right? The globalists. We're going to tie that all to Rome, see? And then I'm going to give some historical things, which is going to be intensely interesting next Sunday. All right.